Welcome to Insight Check, everybody. This is the segment on Dragon Talk where we get to talk to people in the D&D team and the Greater Wizards of the Coast organization and get to know a little bit about them so you know what they do. And today, we have Mackenzie DeArmas, Associate Game Designer on the Dungeons & Dragons team. Hi, Mackenzie. How are you doing? Hi! I'm so happy to be here! Oh, this is so exciting! I'm so excited for this. This is going to be awesome. So we're going to start by rolling an insight check on you. So I got an 11. Uh, Are you going to be truthful going forward? (laughs) I got a 14. Okay, Shelly wins. Okay. Okay. Yep, yep. I think she's going to be truthful. So an associate game designer working Mm -hmm. on, you know, really the words of what ends up in D&D books, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I candle all the words, all the fiddly bits with the mechanics, how many dice you roll when you go and punch something. All of that's kind of what I do. Or okay. more so how many dice you roll when the monster punches you. But, you know, that sort of thing. Because you've been working on monsters more recently? I've, it's mostly been monsters, which I'm not complaining about because I love doing monster design because it lets me, it lets me like peer into the future a little and be like, ooh, I cannot wait for DMs to throw this at players and use this cool ability I built and for players to go, what do you mean it rolls that much damage? What do do you mean it does this to me? What? So (laughs) you work for Dungeon Masters. I I get to make all the the, the creators that will be tossed at the the, unfortunate players or player characters. So how, but how do you do like the math stuff? How are you testing this and balancing it? What, What really does that entail? Uh, oh, for me, I I generally just reference a lot of other monsters because we have so many. Um, there's so many that are in like target range I'm looking for, or even there are monsters who do things that I already want them to do. Like I want this new monster to do something that uh, a previous monster in one of the many, many books already does. So I just sort of go and search through the database and find something that's adjacent to what I want and then just sort of tweak it a little. Uh, there's, there's, it's very much just reinventing the wheel slightly, adding some flashy rims. <laughs> <laughs> Ones that hopefully like spin backwards when it goes yeah. forward. I mean, like, no, the rims are real cool, but it's like they're for designing monsters. It's a lot of using what we've already got uh, and also using a calculator. I, oh, I, have, to calculator. Use a, I have to use a calculator. I made like, yeah. a joke on Twitter that was like, Look, if I have to use a calculator when making the monsters, you could use a calculator when fighting the monsters. I, I can't judge. I have to use a calculator when figuring out how these things work. No, no, don't worry about being slow or bad at math. I am doing it and I am the one creating the things that are causing you to do math. So you have, <laughs> you have free reign. <laughs> and and you joined Wizards uh, somewhat recently, right? Uh, yes, I joined in January. In January. So how has that been coming into the team that has been virtual this whole time? Um, it's been, it's been cool. It, I was like, I I hesitate to say weird because for me, I, since I transitioned from going, like just being full, full full-time freelancer where everything I did was essentially virtual, save for maybe one job. Um, it didn't feel very much different than what I had started out doing. Um, it has been fun hearing about like the mythical wizards of the coast office and being <laughs> like, one day, one day I will be there. One, one day, day I shall enter the tower and see all the cool things that everyone talks about and like actually have like a desk that, you know, is adjacent to human beings that I work with. That'll be, that'll happen. Someday. One day in the future. One day, one day. <laughs> have you, so you have never been to the wizards of the coast office? No. I visited very briefly to fix my laptop and that was it. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you were close to where your desk yes. probably is. I think so. Yeah. We did not, we, we, we may have found my desk, but we're not sure. So it's, it'll be a guessing game when, when I eventually go to the office proper. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Just got to stake your claim, right? Just put, yeah, this, was, this is where my t- name tag is. So this is my desk now. That's the thing. It's like there was no name. I, I didn't have a name tag. There was none, none of the desks had my name tag. I was in the database, but the desk we went to had someone else's name tag. And so we were like, is <laughs> is that it? I mean, it says so here, but it doesn't say that's not your name. So I didn't want to touch it in case it wasn't actually mine. So I just sort of like hovered over it and went, well, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One day. Everything's going to move around anyway. Yeah. When we 
It's it's so cool. No one told me about the giant dice you have, like lying oh, around the yeah. office. Oh yeah, those Everyone were told from me, yeah from Rick and when we did our Rick and Morty uh, live event, and we had the yeah. the giant dice from the cover of the like, like box. People told me about like the art, and then they told me about like the beholder. Uh, but no one no one mentioned like I know about like the ampersand that's going on the wall, but no one told me about the giant dice. And the office was empty, and it was so hard to resist the temptation to just take one just, of the big dice and just. Yuck it. <laughs> it's very heavy. It is not made of foam, unfortunately. Unfortunately. But you, I, I didn't mean, touch it, but like it was so tempting to be like, I want to roll it. It's big. <laughs> I want to roll it. Um, I'm sure they told you about Mitzi. The, did you see yes. Mitzi? Uh, no, because it was under construction. So Mitzi was mysteriously under construction. absent. Yeah, no, what? They were, they're, they're redoing like the lobby and stuff, I think. Where, where would they put her? I wonder. I just didn't, maybe I just didn't go She's to the in area. Quarantine. But like, I didn't, I haven't yet to see uh, Mitzi the dragon. All right. Well, She's we got in my house, guys. There's, <laughs> oh, you took her in? Yeah. I, I've been feeding her. She's, She's quarantining She's, with you. Yeah. Just <laughs> porridge, you know, little spoonfuls every once in a while just to get her strength up. Well, we got to leave you with, you know, something to be excited about seeing when you do finally return to the office. Other I mean, than I'm actual also humans. About seeing, yeah, I was like, people. I'm really excited to actually, like, meet the people on the team because currently I know most of them, like, only from, like, the shoulders up. And it's like, <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to see everyone. And they're going to have actual, like, physical form. They're going to yeah. be, they're going to exist more than just, like, shoulders up. And it's going to be weird. Like I have to deal with people who have height differences because everyone's the same height on, on Zoom yeah. or on Microsoft Teams. And then I'm going to go see people and they're all, I'm going to be like, hello. <laughs> That's going to be the weirdest for me is because obviously a lot of new people have started since we've all been working from home. And I just, I have like attached what I think their heights are in mm -hmm. in my mind. And then when I see them in real life, now I actually did ask one person, Natalie, who's on your team. And I was like, I just get the essence of you like, you're tall. You're like five six, five seven. And she was like, No, I'm like five two. So it's just it's just gonna be weird to see people in real yep. life and just not have yep. any yep. real idea. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like I'm I'm small and I had this thing happen when I went to cons for the first time when people met me and I was like, Oh my God, I am tiny. I don't <laughs> like I I mean Look, I know everyone around me is essentially average height or taller, so I'm the odd one out. But still, I was like, man, I just kind of was so used to talking eye level with everyone. This is this is odd, not in a bad way, but also, I am small. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> it's like you're like a whole set yeah. uh, size category down from everybody else. I am. I am small. <laughs> I could fit in. The, I could be a small mini. We see, you should be not just designing monsters. We got to get you to do a gnome and halfling content out there, uh, just you know, from from the experience that you've lived in. <laughs> let, At let, let me let me be a kobold. I will be a kobold <laughs> or a goblin. Small, scrappy, sometimes screams. <laughs> now you're not. Uh, are you native to the Seattle area? No, I moved when I moved beginning of or end of January, beginning of February. Uh, I wanted to move before I like the job kicked in full swing. So I wasn't dealing like with yeah. wor working and also trying to move. Um, so I got to have the fun experience of moving here. Everyone telling me, oh, it doesn't snow that much. And then like two weeks later, oh, yeah, I moved from Southern that. California to like a place where I was like, oh, I'm not gonna have to worry about snow. I know it's up further up north, but we'll be fine. And then it, ju it just snowed. It mm. snowed so much. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm like, that. what is what is this mysterious substance? <laughs> we may I've have to stop telling people that it doesn't snow in Seattle. It's like it's once every two it. years, once every three years, where we get that it's much accumulation. On a yearly. Yeah, that was a lot of accumulation, but yeah. That was cool, but my my Southern California, my Southern California body was not ready to experience <laughs> temperatures that are below like 65 degrees. Yeah. That's a big change, Southern California. Seattle, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a I'm lot sure wetter. You'll love it. You'll love yeah. it. It's great. Oh no, I love it so it's far. Green. It's great. It's been awesome from what I can see from my inside of my apartment. Uh, it's one <laughs> of those things on my list of things to do once I'm out of quarantine and the world sort of opens up again is to actually explore the place I moved to because I've never been here before. I just up and moved here. Yeah. So I'm like, I have to still do all the touristy stuff. 
Yeah. yeah. You have a, a whole world waiting for you out there. So I go to like Pike's Place, Pike's Place and stuff. Mm. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I've been here for six years and similar to you, I didn't, I came up here for conventions and packs, but didn't get to explore any of the kind of greater area. And I still feel like that now where I'm like, oh, I have to go to that place. And people are like, oh, we went to, you know, this natural park or national park. And I'm like, oh yeah, I have to go there and check it out because there's just, mm-hmm. it's, it's like having a middle earth's worth of continent of, 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 dungeons and places to go explore that we just haven't really been able to do, especially, you know, over those last year. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. We do have, we are very lucky. Yeah. So like what, when you're not designing games and balancing monsters, what, what sorts of things do you like to do? Um, I mean, I do like playing games and I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make more fun to or make more time to play games for fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, just as a way to, you know, fight off the burn burnout and stuff. Um, I also I'm very slowly getting into video games again. I'm it's very hard for me to get into video games because I have very very terrible hand eye coordination. <laughs> but I'm trying to get into more gaming. I I got a Switch Lite when I graduated as a graduation present last year, nice. and I've been trying to like get into like start playing like Breath of the Wild uh, and Hollow Knight. I'm not very good at either. And it's a little stressful because I keep dying, <laughs> but um, it's been really fun. Um, I've also I doodle a little. Um, I I draw and I like drawing like my D D characters for fun. Uh, I wasn't I'm self taught, so I'm like not great at it, but it's fun for me. And I love like I get a lot of I get a really big kick out of like designing like character outfits and doing like character concepts. Uh, just sort of helping visualize kind of what I feel for like certain characters that I have sitting in my D&D Beyond account that I will one day maybe sometime get to play. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And, cool. and cooking. I like cooking. Oh, cool. What's your oh, specialty? What? Yeah, I was just going to ask. Following a recipe? Just like, what do you like to... Yeah, no, I was like following a recipe. Oh, following a recipe. recipe. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't make my own stuff yet. I used to when I was in university, but that was essentially, what do I have in the pantry? Cool. That's dinner now. Yeah. I don't think that's a specialty. I think that's, that's a good just, skill, though, to be that's improvising like a dungeon yeah. master, like a D&D. Player. Yeah. I was uh, like, I will call this. This is my garbage pasta. I call it to that because it is literally it's just whatever I got left over, like bits and pieces from other recipes here. Just toss them all in the pot there. That works. It's food. <laughs> that's very good. Um, so you mentioned before working at Wizards, you did some mm-hmm. freelance work. Yes. What's What were some of the projects that you've worked on before? Um, so I was the lead writer for the Islands of Sina Una, which is a uh, 5e setting based all around pre-colonial Filipino mythology. Uh, I'm Filipino myself. And so it was super fun getting to research into uh, Filipino culture and mythology um, and working to preserve a lot of it because a lot of it is being deliberately forgotten or um, fading out. And so getting to look into that sort of thing and preserve it in a way that allows people to interact with it and make other stories that they can pass on with, with you know, that culture in mind was super awesome. Uh, I also did a lot of work for Matt Koval over at MCDM. I was one of the co-designers for Kingdoms and Warfare. Uh, I was working on that pretty much throughout all of 2020. And I also was one of the contributors to their Arcadia magazine, where I made a bunch of elementals. Fun. Exciting. I'm a, ba- a Kickstarter backer of uh, uh, Kingdoms, and I can't wait for it to come out very soon. It's going to be cool. It it's going to so be real cool. cool. Yeah. I got the strongholds. I'm ready to to, to jump into to, to Kingdoms. It's going to be fun. Yes. I, I was like, oh, man, you're going to think it's so cool. I can't say anything about it, but it's going to be so cool. <laughs> that's yeah, that's the game industry right there. Uh, and I loved uh, playtesting uh, some of the Sina Unu stuff with you. It was super great. And uh, I loved that story of like just, you know, uh, preserving history and culture through yeah. uh, a, a gaming product seems just, yeah. you know, I, I just love that. I always find it super interesting because like, A lot of like Filipino stories were passed down by oral tradition, which is a part of the reason why they're being forgotten. And I always find it so harmonious that like we're preserving, 
these stories in a way that also encourages oral storytelling. And it's passing down these stories in that same sort of vein. And I think that's just really cool. It's also just been super cool to learn about all of that stuff and all these stories and myths that, you know, I, I hadn't even heard of. Yeah, yeah right. And cool. then be able to present those to a whole new audience uh, mm-hmm. and, and get some of that cultural memory out there. Yep. Uh, it's fantastic. I love it. And it's it's very. I love how different it feels than uh, some of the traditional, you know, D and D tropes that are out there. Uh, mm-hmm. Really great stuff. Cool. And now, you are. Do you? I know you dungeon master, but are you also mm-hmm. a player? Or do you favor one versus the other? Currently, right now, I'm not dungeon mastering any like active campaigns, which I want to change soon. But I was busy with moving and all that. Um, so right now, I'm mostly a player. Okay. One of the things that we have been working on together, and I loved your idea about your approach to teaching or to, uh, you know, giving advice to new dungeon masters, because you said that you're relatively new to that role as well. And that there's, there's something about having a new dungeon master teach a new dungeon master, because you're, you still kind of remember all of those things that Mm -hmm. maybe gave you a little anxiety or that you were worried about in the beginning. So do you have like just like really quickly, like what would be like your number one tip for a new dungeon master? Um, This is a lesson I learned very quickly early on, and it still is a little hard for me to internalize. But um, I would say, remember that you as much as we joke about the DM being like a god or a deity or like the eldritch being in control of the table. Uh, it's always important to remember that you you don't have to know everything. You don't have to be omnipotent or this omnipotent being. Um, you can rely on your players to help fill in some of the gaps. Um, and you are allowed to make mistakes and pause and take that time to go, I wasn't expecting this. Give me a second to recalibrate. Um, allowing yourself that sort of grace to find a comfortable spot with from which you can improvise, I think is really important because so often people expect the DM to know everything, to prepare for everything, to respond to everything, no matter how off the rails it goes. And it's been really freeing for me to remember that I can step back and remember that I am only human. Yes, that is very good advice. Um, hard for I think a lot of of new dungeon masters to accept, like because there is that perception that you have to know everything. But yeah, if you're just you're you're part of the party, you're part of the group, mm-hmm. and everybody yeah. can have a share in yeah. in that telling of the story. So that's cool. Awesome. Well, I feel like I have some more insight into your character now, Mackenzie. <laughs> Past our insight check. Ooh. Yeah, yo, roll awesome. high. Well, so excited for your uh, work uh, at the DD team and 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 where it's going to go in the future. I know we can't necessarily talk about what is exactly everything you're working on, but I am excited about it in I'm theory. I'm excited for redacted and also redacted and also redacted. <laughs> oh my God, that redacted book I is going to be redacted. off the chain. It's going to be redacted amazing. Redacted is going to be so cool. I can't believe we're doing redacted. Redacted uh, confirmed. People are going to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks, Mackenzie. You're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.